These are the eggs of a crazy monster and as we speak, more and more eggs are being laid. This bizarre moth cannot fly and in fact it can barely walk. Its appearance is rather bizarre and monstrous. In what seems like a cruel joke of evolution, its wings have been completely reduced to stubs and its legs are so short that it struggles to move or walk. This is the female of the vapor moth, a completely bizarre animal that is nothing but an egg laying machine. It boggles the mind that one single female may lay hundreds of eggs in such large volume and quantity compared to her own body size. And she has to do it quickly, for she is completely defenseless to any approaching predators. The eggs of this species, if necessary, are capable of hibernating. It's how they survive winter. But in this case, the eggs have been laid in summer. The eggs are laid in large clusters, usually on top of the empty cocoon that the female just emerged from. That means tiny little caterpillars are going to hide from them soon that will start their journey into the moth world. Finally, something is moving. These small hairy things are the newborn caterpillars of the vapor moth. They will never get to meet their mother, for the parents have long passed away. From the moment they are born, they are doomed to find their way alone in a cold and hostile world. The caterpillars disperse themselves with the wind. Hanging by a thin silken thread, the air currents can blow them far away. This is how a moth species, of which the females are unable to fly, still manage to disperse themselves through their environment. One of the first instincts of the caterpillars is to feed. In fact, for the next few weeks, they will do nothing else but obsessively consume food. Butterflies and moths are known to be picky. Some species of caterpillars can only survive by eating a specific single species of plant. The vapor moth, however, is built different. This species has been observed to eat over a thousand species of plants and they are probably one of the most generalist species of moths if it comes to their diet. That being said, they still have favorites. They seem rather fond of oak tree, hazel, willow and walnut. They also have a taste for cherry, bramble, clover and much more types of plants. When it comes to the environment that they prefer, they seem to be somewhat more generalist. This species is native to Europe and today we are following their journey in the Netherlands, a small and densely populated country in Northern Europe, where this insect can be very common in some places. It does seem to have a preference for hedgerows and woody areas, but they are also often found in fans shrublands, gardens, and parks, as long as there are enough woody plants available for them. As the caterpillars grow larger, they grow a beautiful and fancy coat of hair. These hairs serve several purposes. One of these purposes is to be defensive. While this species is not at all very dangerous, the hairs are known to give people who are sensitive to it an itchy sensation. 
and sometimes minor skin rashes. They also help to ward off smaller invertebrate predators. Being so hairy makes it harder to get bitten or stung by anything from wasps to spiders to parasitic flies or assassin bugs. They do provide a modicum of protection. And on top of that, the tufts of hair give them a sensory advantage. Caterpillars are often nearly blind. Their vision is not very sophisticated, although they can see the difference between light and dark. Their sense of taste and smell does help them locate food, but it really doesn't help them meditate any threats. However, hares can detect movement and it probably aids their sensory abilities. Thirdly, the hairs can protect them against the elements. They repel anything from water to dust particles and keep them isolated, probably aiding them in thermoregulation, allowing them to stay warm, but also protecting them from the sun's rays in some situations. This has been introduced in many places across the globe and is classified as a minor invasive species. It has been introduced in North America, Australia, many parts of Asia and even Chile, a country in South America. This is because the species can easily lift on cargo in several of their life stages and escape into the environment. Despite mostly being native to Europe, and maybe a smaller part of temperate Asia and North Africa, humans seem to have spread this species almost worldwide, it seems. And although they are unwelcome guests in many gardens, thankfully the species is not that destructive. That's because the caterpillars are more generalist and they don't forage or target from specific species of crops and the feeding damage is more spread out over a multitude of plants instead of targeting just one or two host plants. Once fully grown, the caterpillars will start to spin a silk cocoon. Using glands that are near their face, they expel a protein that hardens into strong yet elastic threads that form a protective material. And they don't stop until they have fully encased themselves. The cocoon stage is very vulnerable. Therefore, the cocoons are usually hidden in the vegetation. They prefer to spin in crevices or the underside of the leaf. The caterpillars incorporate their defensive hairs into the silk to make it even more well protected. Inside the cocoon, a magical transformation slowly takes place. Something has started to move. A completely new kind of creature emerges. And this one is a male. And here is a secret that you may not have been aware of. The males of this species do have wings. The first challenge in his life is to reach a high point, to climb up and hang upside down from there. You see, when a moth is born, it needs to inflate its wings. Their wings are generally too large to fit inside of a cocoon, so instead, the wings are folded up and pretty much deflated into tiny stubs. Only after transforming into a moth and escaping the cocoon, they do pump up their body fluids through the veins in their wings in order to inflate them and to give them their shape.
And in case you are wondering how a mod species that cannot fly and can barely walk is able to find a mate, this is how. Sexual dimorphism. The males of this species are pretty mobile. They can fly and they have wings that allow them to find females over large distances. When they are ready to take flight, the males are capable of raising their own body temperature by shivering. The males have only one goal in mind, to locate a female, as soon as possible, and then he takes to the skies. What makes this species truly bizarre is the female. Evolution has reduced the females to buttocks with legs. She is nothing but a giant egg-laying factory. The females of this species are so round and fat that they struggle to walk. Therefore, most of the time they simply sit still and don't move much at all. It would be incorrect to say that she is truly wingless. The female still has wings in fact, but they are so shriveled up that they have lost most of their function. Or to put it into biological terms, the wings are vestigial. And the females are brachypteras, this means having rudimentary or small wings. One of the things that is just as large as her bottom, however, is her sex drive. As soon as she emerges from the cocoon, she will start calling a male. By repeatedly extending a gland from the tip of her abdomen, she begins to release pheromones in bursts. A lot of moths don't release pheromones continuously, but rather in small and rapid intervals. Believe it or not, but this helps the male to estimate how far away she is. As the pheromone plume disperses with the wind, it tends to spread out. And the mean frequency of pheromone filaments encodes distance to the calling female. It is a form of long-distance sexual communication. This female is hanging on her cocoon. It won't be very long before a male responds to the signal. Downwind, males are capable of locating females over surprisingly long distances. It looks like these two females will have to compete for a partner. A bachelor arrives and picks the first female that he comes into contact with, leaving the other female alone and single. But if you're a moth, you have no excuse to be single. The males are so sensitive to the female's pheromone, they can detect as little as a single molecule of pheromone. As you may have noticed by now, these moths are active during the day. Many moth species are nocturnal, but vapor moth males are an exception. Males often fly in the afternoon or evening, especially on warm and sunny days. Mating tends to last half an hour or less, and after mating the meals leave. After she is fertilized, she only has one job left to do, laying as many eggs as possible. This will be her final act. 
After laying eggs, the female dies. Both males and females of this species are short-lived and only live for a few days. Neither males or females can feed and their mouth parts are reduced. They simply mate, lay eggs and then die of starvation. And those who die of starvation are lucky because some of them will die way before that moment. Predation is a thing. The females are rather defenseless when it comes to predators. Ants are a major enemy. They can sniff out the females and kill them before they have a chance to reproduce. Life is cruel for vapor and moth females. Yet, being fat and wingless has advantages. It means all the resources can be allocated to egg production by outsourcing all the heavy lifting and movement to the males. And once the caterpillars hatch, the life cycle is completed. For now, continuing the process yet again, into perpetuity. Thank you for watching my amateur documentary series. It's called Bart Films and I have a playlist of it on my channel. Nothing makes me happier than knowing that people enjoy these episodes. They take a lot of time to make. Which insect should I film next? Let me know in the comments and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye, subscribe.